I have solved now quite a couple of software based challenges, but originally I really wanted to gain more hardware experience and there are only like 2 or 3 weeks left for the competition. So I decided it's time to check out Whack-A-Mole, what I assume is more hardware related. Who doesn't like a classic game of Whack the Mole? This time the moles infiltrated deep into the backyard of a poor farmer's family. The moles are ruining the crops which the farmer desperately needs to provide for his wife and two children. Any traveler able to help him extinguish the darn things will be greatly rewarded. Are you up for the task? I have never played Whack the Mole but I have seen it. You have these holes and a hammer and moles keep peeking out of them for a short period of time and you need to whack them fast enough. And if this is what this challenge is about, then how could you simulate or implement a game like this on an Arduino? I mean, you could imagine this Arduino sits at the core of this arcade machine. How could it work? So let's flash the challenge onto the board and let's see what the serial console tells us. Welcome adventurer. We are glad you are here. A huge family of moles have found their way into our yard. We need you to get rid of all 20 of them. If you manage that, we will reward you. When you are ready, press enter. Okay, so let's press enter. Ready, get set, go. You missed it. Try again by pressing enter. Hmm. So at first I checked if some other inputs do something. For example, can I hit enter very very fast or space or maybe a number on the keyboard? But it doesn't do anything. So I think we have to get out some hardware equipment. My logic is the following. We can interact with this board over a serial connection. It looks like there is not much going on except starting the game by pressing enter. So what other ways are there for us to interact with the board? There are not many options. This thing doesn't have any other peripherals except a couple of input or output pins. So I want to know if I see any output on these pins of the Arduino when the game starts. Because that would make sense. If that Arduino were to sit in an arcade machine, it would use these I.O. pins to control motors, LEDs or whatnot. To do this, I use my Sailor Logic Analyzer, which I have shown in a previous video. I can basically connect it to all the pins I want to observe and then can use a software on my laptop to record any events. And these Sailor cables can conveniently directly plug into the soldered pins on the board. So basically when I click start, it will now in very very short intervals check the voltage of these connected pins and store the value. And that happens millions of times and it already uses over 2 gigabytes of RAM to store all these points. So this takes a bit to process but look at this. You can already see that there is at least one pin with some action. You also see that some other channels kind of mirror that pattern. That's probably just some analog leakage. I don't know. It, it somehow interferes with each other. But we ignore it. Oh, and we started the game twice in this time period. So you can see that there was output twice. Awesome. To explore this now a bit closer, I decided to use my oscilloscope. So I can disconnect the logic analyzer and hook up the two channels of the oscilloscope. You can already see some of the pros and cons of an oscilloscope with a logic analyzer. My oscilloscope only has two channels, while the logic analyzer had eight. So it was easier to find the interesting pin with the Sailor. But now that we know where it is, the oscilloscope is a bit faster to proceed. Because we don't have to wait for data to be collected and so forth. It will instantly display the stuff. So I hooked up channel 1 yellow to the serial TX pin, which is the serial output of the board. So here we can observe all the characters the board prints. I want to see that because I want to know how this interesting pin reacts when the game sends the go to say that the game started. And I hooked up blue to the interesting pin 13. You can also enable serial decoding on the oscilloscope, so the screen bubbles are actually the decoded ASCII characters. And I set the trigger to trigger when there is some serial data sent. A trigger means that the oscilloscope will wait until it sees a certain event and then record and display what happens after it. So it will trigger now every time the board sends something. So when we start the game, we can see the ready, get set, go.
and on the last output you see how the interesting pin goes high. I think we are a bit too far zoomed in. The serial output is way faster than what we see on pin 13. So let's adjust the display a bit more and start the game again. And there we see it, three spikes. And if we do it again, six spikes. And we start the game again, four spikes. What could that mean? I think it's pretty clear where this is going. If you think of the game Whack-A-Mole, you first have to see where the mole is peeking out in order to then hit it. I'm sure the number of peaks tells you which hole you have to hit. So at first I tried to look at the peaks and then quickly send like a number 4 or a number 6 via serial because I thought maybe the game is played via the serial console. But again, nothing happens. And I actually already suspected that it's probably hardware again. So. How could we interact with this board now? How can we count the peaks and then somehow perform the hits? So I thought, let's try it with a simple microcontroller. Let's take another Arduino. This is an Arduino compatible board and just program it. First thing we have to do is to count the number of peaks. To do this, I obviously have to add some cables between the Arduino and the challenge board. Here are already two connections. One goes to the pin with the peaks so we can count them and the second one is testing out my assumption that we have to send a peak to one of the other digital pins to hit a mole. I just chose one, I'm still just exploring. I start out with the digital read example included with the Arduino IDE, which sets up a serial connection between the Arduino and my laptop so I can print some debug messages. And then I basically just write some code that reads from the input pin and checks if the state changes if we suddenly encounter a peak. I don't want to waste too much time explaining code, but let's check out this early stage here. Up here is the setup routine, which will run once on startup and will define the pin 4 as input and the pin 7 as output. So with pin 4 we can read and count the peaks, and on pin 7 we want to send a peak and hopefully hit them all. Then the loop routine will be executed in a loop. So you have to read this code knowing that this will be executed over and over again very quickly. So we first read the digital state of the input pin. If the state doesn't change, for example when we constantly read a zero, nothing happens. But when it does change, when we see a peak, we read a one, we enter this if. We save the current state and remember the current time. And if the current state is a one, so we read a peak, we will count up once. Then in the next loop we will read again this pin and it might still be high, so the state is not different and nothing happens. But when it falls down again, we would remember the next timing. And if it gets high after that, it will then count up again. So this can count peaks. And then the if down here will check the time that was stored of the last state change. We have seen that the peaks always have the same time intervals. So if we have not seen a state change for 100 milliseconds, basically there will be no other peak and it's low for a while, we want to hit the correct mole. To do this, set the output pin 7 to high, wait a bit with a delay and then pull it back to 0. This will create a peak and then we reset the counter. Let's look at this on the oscilloscope. I hooked up the yellow channel to our output 7 to see our peak. And as you can see, the counter peaks are done and then you see the fine needle peak. If you zoom in, you see that it's indeed a peak, but it definitely is too short. On the oscilloscope interface, you have some information such as the time scale of the x-axis so you can see there that the blue peaks are 50 milliseconds long. So let's set the delay also to 50 milliseconds. I would assume that we should send exactly the same peak to the challenge board. And here's how it looks like running. Here on the left the challenge board output and here on the right is the Arduino output counting the peaks. Seems to work. Whoa! Did you see that? We got a great job! You whacked it! Only 50 more to go! Again! Twice! This happened because we counted three peaks every time and it looks like we do exactly what we are supposed to do and the pin we connected of the challenge board represents the third hole. So the plan is clear. Let's figure out which other numbers correspond to which other pin. I decided to go pin by pin so I plug in one more and make this one peak every time. If you get another number then three and hit something we know that this number is that pin. If no number would work with this pin, we move the cable to the next one. That's an easy process, just a bit tedious, takes a while. 
but it's fun to look at the oscilloscope and see the successful hits. So I keep adding cables, trying to find which counted number correspond to which input pin. And as you can see, I have more and more output pins and have this big switch case where, depending on the number of peaks we counted, a certain output pin is triggered. If we count one peak, we send the peak over pin 8. If we count five peaks, we send a peak over pin 9. And it works so well. See how far we get. And it looks so awesome on the oscilloscope. Blue are the peaks we count, and yellow indicates when we try to hit a hole. But why the heck does it not continue after the 6th or 7th hit? This really stumped me. I had some theories. One was that starting with level 7 we actually have to hit multiple holes, like the occult game more moles come up, or maybe the hole numbering changes and suddenly it's not correct anymore. But it was late and I had to go to bed. The next day I wanted to continue, but nothing worked anymore. What the heck is going on? I realized that when you restart the board, the pin assignments will be different, so hole number 3 is not pin number 7 anymore. This is when I start to write code that would automatically brute force the correct pinout. It would hit holes on random until it continued and when it does, the hit was correct and saved it in a big table. This took a lot of time. And in the end all these attempts were kinda stupid. Because when I was staring at the oscilloscope screen, I noticed that at the level I'm failing, the serial fail response seems to come back a bit faster. Blue is the serial output, so it tells us that we hit something or we failed, and yellow are the peaks that we see. If you look closely, you can notice the difference. What if I'm just sending too slow, and the pinout is random at the start, but fixed throughout the levels? Damn. So here's my final code. A lot more complex, fix the timing issue, and still with some code that can figure out the random pinhole numbering. It's pretty shitty code, but it works. Here's the serial output on the left and the current level status sent from the Arduino board on the right. The little star indicates the last highest levels. The arrow shows how far we got last level. Once it's filled out, it's able to finish all of them. And there is the flag. And here's how it looks like on the oscilloscope. You can see it only solves occasionally a level until it figured out all the numbers and then it solves them all.